Hello, everybody, and welcome to Respawning Fire, the kick-ass, irreverent gaming podcast from Affable Idiots. I'm one of your hosts, Alexander Kazina, a.k.a. Cozy Bear, and this is our Backlog Accomplishment with Respawn, Aim, Fire, and Friends Review. Actually, it's just Backlog Accomplishment with Respawn and Friends Review. Got a little bit tripped up there. Maybe we've been doing a whole bunch of recording tonight and our brains are a little bit frazzled. Uh, all I have to say, all that that I just said in a very long roundabout way is what is known as our barf review. And tonight is our barf review of Kerbal Space Program. Joining me this evening for this review is Adam Gumbert. And no, there I am. I was muted. I'm go. back. Everyone going to space, having a good time. We, we, we've had enough technical issues tonight. <laughs> It's a nice and nobody else because Chad, I don't know, got into a fight with a goose that shit on his keyboard as well. It's one of those imitator geese online. Like they saw the crime of the goose that shit on my keyboard and were like, oh, I can do the same to Chad. But then he did it and everyone's like, hey, bro, not funny anymore. A lot like of you're, goose you're, shit going around. Yeah. It was know? funny the first time. It's not funny this time. <laughs> uh, anyways, you're probably looking at. Uh, my screen right now if you're watching the video version of this and you're thinking wow cozy really went all out for this production he prepared a whole desk with the words kerbal space program on it and a cool spacey background behind him via green screen certainly this is going to be the mother of all kerbal space program reviews uh and unfortunately i'm here to disappoint and say uh probably not i i've i have a sneaking suspicion that when we get to the end of this recording uh this will probably not go down in the annals of great reviews of kerbal space program in the history of all reviews of this game even on podcasts videos youtube videos and other such media where people review games but i do have a few thoughts to share so kerbal space program this is uh originally a game that i actually heard about through anthony gallegos uh, who, of course, back in the day, he used to work for IGN.com, currently working on Subnautica 2. He's appeared on such podcasts uh, as the Comedy Button. Um, in fact, he actually appeared alongside us on Respawning Fire last year, uh, where he competed on Rafferty alongside Ryan Scott. Um, and I remember uh, in like my introduction to Kerbal Space Program via Anthony Gallegos, watching a video in which he basically attempted to make a spacecraft in the uh, kind of shape of an X-Wing, because I think I a big fan of Star Wars as well. And I remember being pretty impressed with the game's sort of creation suite and Anthony Gagos's creativity, but I feel like that video in retrospect kind of gave me a bit of a false impression of how easy it would be to create stuff in that game. Kind of gave me the vibe of, oh, this is a game where you can create wackadoo creations and maybe you can get them to space. And I was perhaps not prepared for how hardcore it actually was going to be. Um, Kerbal Space Program was one of the first times, you know, in my history growing up as a fan of video games. So that I really registered, oh, that's a video game made by a Mexican studio. Um, of course, I understood that, you know, video games are developed globally. I understood that, like, there are video games made in Japan, like Mario and Zelda. There are video games made here in North America, like Mass Effect and Call of Duty. That was the first time that I remembered a video game being brought up. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's made by a studio based in Mexico. Uh, and so long story short, uh, at the very beginning of this month, we were like, hey, our bar for view for Dave to Diver is landing on May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. You know, it would be fun if we made our barf game list for this month, all games developed by Mexican developers. And I thought, you know what? This is Kerbal Space Program's time to shine. But I got to be honest. I got to be totally honest with you. I was kind of hoping for Mulaka, which is one of the other games uh, that was on our survey to potentially take the crown. Because that was kind of the game that I was most interested in eventually getting to at some point, uh, some day, at some time, at some year, at some any time. Um, nevertheless, the vote ultimately swayed in favor of Kerbal Space Program. All... Uh, three games, uh, Kerbal Space Program, Mulaka, and one of the other two games, I believe it might have been Astro Dogs, uh, each got a vote, but then our uh, Twitter poll shifted it in favor of Kerbal Space Program. And it's like, well, 
I mean, hey, this is going to be interesting. Again, it was a game that I was intrigued by back in the day, watching some of Anthony Gallegos' videos of it. Um, right up front, I was like, hey, you know, this is not the kind of game that we're going to be able to co fully complete over the span of a month. Just play as much of it as you want to. And at the end of the month, we'll kind of share our experiences with it, how much we got into it. And I'm here to report I did not get particularly far into this one. I booted it up. I saw all the options that were available to me. I decided, you know what? I'm going to play some of these tutorial levels. We'll start off slow and easy, ease into it, play the first tutorial where you you make that little spacecraft that technically doesn't even reach outer space. Thought it was pretty good. Thought it was veering a little bit into the realm of, oh man, this is getting kind of complicated, but figured let's go to number two. Number two is the one where you actually launch into space. Again, things games revealing the fact that it is not for babbies. Uh, but I'm like, well, might as well go into number three. Number three is the one where you make the slightly bigger rocket that actually does go into space. I was like, okay, uh, we're getting complicated here, but I'm down for round four. Went to the fourth tutorial where you got to go into space. And in that particular tutorial, it's like, oh, by the way, there are certain crucial actions that you have to do at certain crucial points. When those points happen, press the start button to pause the game. Press the start button to pause the game and a whole textbook of instructions await you. And I realized, man, I don't think that I'm really kind of cut out to play this much more of Kerbal Space Program. So I messed around with it a little bit further from there. And that was the last of it that I played. Adam, that is, I don't know if that's on record as the longest, <clears throat> rattlingest speech I've ever given on any of these barf reviews. Oh, no, absolutely not. Whether or not it is, I apologize for hawking the mic for quite some time. No, you're good. You're filling up what's the What was most your experience with this game? Yeah, yeah, that's what most podcasts are going to be anyways. Yeah, no, here's the thing about this game is that, like it's very similar as you were like I did the tutorial stuff, went to a little bit of the free play. And it's one of those games that I enjoy the game, but you have to be into what the game is and I wasn't that. Cuz like this game is legitimately rocket science. But then they like hmm. put colorful characters in there to make it feel silly, but like it, no, it's actually just rocket science though. Which, again, there's a certain kind of person who would be super into this. Like your Anthony Gallegos is a perfect example. That guy would be into that game, and you could tell. A lot of people, I mean, this game is very well loved. Um, and I enjoyed it. Like, I enjoyed building a rocket and sending it to space. I enjoyed, like, putting these pieces together, da 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 But once it got to the point where it's like, oh, now you actually need to know, like, <laughs> like entry trajectories and, like, hardcore math and stuff, I was like, okay, I can't do this as a video game. But... I like the idea there, but it just, once it goes to the hardcore point, I was like, all right, I'm going to take a break. So I got like an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes into it, enjoyed it. But yeah, then once you get to that hard part, it's like, I could see if this is what you were into, easily dropping a ton of time into it. It's fun to feel like how I feel with uh, No Man's Sky for a different reason. But like No Man's Sky is a very specific experience where it's like, do you want to mm -hmm. just go in the universe and dick around with your friends? Like, that's what it is. We'll land on these planets, see if the biome is correct, and we'll build a base and whatever. There's a little bit of story, but not much. But you have to be into exploring a bunch of planets with your friends. And if not, you won't like it. But if you do, you'll like it. This game's the same thing. If you're into rocket science, you'll like it. If not, it's going to be a hard jump out of any moment. So I like the game, but I was like, I'm not going to stick with this because I don't want to do homework. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, we've made it clear up until this point, but just to kind of reiterate, both of us have a, a deep level of respect for this game. This is a game that, you know, has received many accolades over the year, has a, you know, voracious group of fans that still continue to support and play it. Uh, it's a game that uh, has a score of 88 on Metacritic and has gotten scores from individual outlets like PC Gamer as high as 96 out of 100. Uh, this is one solid experience and... I don't want anyone to think that the lack of time that we invested in this game was an indictment on our part of uh, this being a not up to stuff experience. I will say like those tutorials, they, they clued me in very quickly to the fact that this was a pretty hardcore intensive experience, but those tutorials also, I will say kind of funny in points actually kind of uh, had some fun little endearing character moments. If I was sitting down and being like, I am devoting my entire life to learning rocket science and getting really, really good at this game, I could see myself actually pleasantly kind of enjoying this. I think that it is as smooth of a way to ease someone into the 
wonderfully complicated world of rocket science in such a way that I'd imagine wouldn't want to make you absolutely tear your hair out. So, yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, big and great. Yeah, I think this is cool for specific people who are into it. And it's, I love that they, that a game like this can even exist. Is Adam going to play anymore? Absolutely not. <laughs> I will never play this video game again. But like I said, I think it is good at what it's doing and I'm glad it exists. But it is a, it's a tough sell if you're not into that. So I'm not shocked that a lot of people will be like, ooh, no. And a lot of people are like, yes, please. That's all I want. All right. Well, with that, I think we've reached the end of our review. Again, I don't think that this review will go down in the annals of history as one of the greatest Kerbal Space Program reviews of all time. But know that we loved it. So if you're a super huge fan of Kerbal Space Program, you've got nothing on us. We didn't come in here and shit on the game for 12 minutes and say it was terrible. We're here to say we think that if you really love this kind of game, that it's a bee's knees. So don't hate us. And you all have a good night. <laughs> That'd be wild for this one to get a bunch of hate on it because like the Kerbal guys are like, hold on a minute, you assholes. That'd be great. But no, I'm with you, Cozy. We like it. So yeah, that's uh, that's the review. I guess because you want to let us out of here? Yeah. Uh, do we want to... I got to be honest, in my notes, I didn't really include... Do I have to do the kind of... No, it's just patreon.com slash fire. Yeah, you can go and you can check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash fire. We just recorded... Uh, a new uh, installment of Locked and Loaded, and you can definitely look forward to checking that out uh, at the beginning of June. It's going to be a very fun and unique episode, to say the least. Uh, and yeah, you can, of course, tune into our podcast, which typically goes live on twitch.tv slash affableidiots uh, every Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And yeah, right. that's that. You can do your little, Go your home. little sign off. Have fun. <laughs> Enjoy Kerbal Space Program. Don't hate us. Uh -huh. In fact, you know what? I'm going to tell you this right now. Oh. You should love us. Embrace us. Show us enduring adulation for our expert video game opinions that are 12 minutes long. I don't know how long this is, actually. I just how love... long is this in Audacity? No, I just love that this is like, we obviously had a very long time recording the last thing we did, and now it's like, talking about this game you played for 15 minutes. <laughs> Oh, man. I was just waiting for the see you next time, Cozy. Can you give me that line? And I will see you next time.